idea for this painting came to me when I was laying on my bed. I closed my little eyes and I was picturing little things in my little head. One of the things that I saw was this white dragon with a red eye and it's like hidden in some kind of forest. And the lore is that she goes through the jungle, creep, 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 through the jungle, creep, creep, creep. She looks for shiny things glinting on the jungle floor, right? So it could be a pot, it could be a pan, it could be a can, it could be a man. And she collects them, scoops them up, brings them up into the trees, puts them in her little hoard area. The, the perspective of this is like an explorer, you're like a, a monkey or something. You're like a, you're in the trees essentially, you're in the trees, you're in the trees. And you've come across Opal's hoard and she sees you, you see her and it's awkward but it's also really beautiful with the light coming through the trees and glinting off her beautiful wings and off of the 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 shit and off of the stuff that she has i wanted to create sort of like a skull like face for her and then the wings are very multicolored they're somewhere in between feathered and scaled but on her back are all of the different things that she's collected those are her favorite items and then I added so much texture overlaid onto this, like texture, texture, texture. I go to, like, I shouldn't say the names of the places that I go to, because, like, maybe I'm stealing and I don't know it. But I find textures online usually, and I also make my own textures sometimes, but not for this one, because it's, it's a lot of work and I was lazy, and, like, I wasn't lazy, but I didn't want to do hard work, so I was lazy. But I wasn't lazy, but I was. And so... I layered lots of like textures over the top, texture, 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 texture. I played around with the hue jitter and sort of the hue shift features that Procreate has. Like up close you can see all of the little variations in color. That's a really great way to create a more naturalistic look in digital art. Traditional painting has a lot of natural color variation because the pigments of the paint are mixing. And then with digital art, you don't have that so much. Conversely, if you turn the hue jitter way up, it doesn't look natural. It actually looks more sort of mechanical and robotic and digital. And I utilize it on like the borders, embracing the fact that this is a digital painting. It's not a traditional painting, it's like a digital painting. So it should have some features that are kind of mechanical. So for all of the different treasures and metal objects that are hidden in the trees, I wanted to keep them more loose. By leaving the sketches visible in the corners, you can kind of see this gradual transition from just like a simple pencil line into something more complex, like the layering that's on the dragon. Like, I don't want somebody to look at my painting and wonder, how did she do that, you know? I want them to be able to see like the sketches and know. There's something really cool about like breaking down the illusion of everything. It invites you in. Like everybody's made a line with a pencil, everybody's sketched, everybody understands that. And so by having like the sketches on the side, it's like, it's like I'm overthinking it, you know? <laughs> but um, it, it gives people that sort of way in. Like they're like, oh, I understand this. And then they can sort of understand more about the painting through that. I also, really like mixing different kinds of brushes in Procreate. I know that there's some people that hazard against that. They say you should stick to one brush, and I see where they're coming from. You know, you can lean on, say, like a grass brush, and then, yes, it's good for making grass quick, but you also are, like, sacrificing your creative ability by using a grass brush. But, 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 I really do like using and mixing all of the different brushes because it really leans into that idea of this is a digital painting. This is not a traditional painting. Like, I want to see some, you know, some ugliness. Like, I, I want a little bit of digital ugliness in this. <laughs> I think there needs to be a little bit of digital ugliness in every digital painting. So yeah, combining harsh lines with high resolution brushes with low resolution brushes and everything sort of feels kind of off and disconnected and so i think that also presents even more of a challenge of how am i going to make all of these these extremely different brushes work together and it's also kind of like a fuck you to following the rules i think a good painting has a combination of yes i will follow this rule and fuck you i'm not going to do that 
you have to strike that balance for yourself. And some paintings will be more on the, oh, this is, these are great rules side, and some paintings will be more on the fuck you side. But I think you need a little bit of both in every single painting. <laughs> But anyway, that's the painting, and I'm so, so happy with the way that it turned out. Thanks for watching the video. Yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments. Give the video a like if you liked it. And also, follow me on Instagram. That's where I post all of my artwork. I also have a Twitter, so you can follow me there. The handle for both of those is at TaraZook. Yeah, and thanks so much for watching. I'm going to be trying to share more, and I think it will get easier the more that I do. And that is what I'm telling myself, so that is what it will be the truth. Goodbye.